All right, so let's talk about importing data to your website. Importing data that's been cleaned up and prepped is as easy as baking a cake. The problem with baking a cake is if all the ingredients aren't right, if they're not there, you get a biscuit and not a cake. So there's some important steps. So let's talk about the steps. Um, first things first, your website's a very powerful tool. But as much as that powerful tool can save you tons of time, help you make profit, sell your products, if you miss a step, if you're answering phone calls and emails during the time you're doing this, you're going to make a mistake. So I recommend you take your phone into the other room. If you're in an office, shut your door. Tell people you're not taking any phone calls or emails or problems. Inevitably, you will start something, forget where you left off, and wind up importing junk into your website. So, first steps first is prepping a data sheet. To prep a data sheet, I want to explain what isn't a data sheet and what you typically get over constantly. And I know you do, because I do as well. Now, even for those that are on one of our streamlined sites who think, well, you'll load all of our data for us, you may have a line that isn't included on ASAP. So you need to understand what to do when that happens. So I have a couple samples that I've gotten. Um, and first, we're going to talk about this type of a sheet. Now, um, I do recommend, this is not a CSV, I don't recommend ever working on your data sheet in a CSV. That's the last step. Why is that? Um, Excel has this really awesome way of changing things and putting formulas in that you didn't really want them to do. And so if you work in an XLS uh, while you're prepping your data sheet, then turn it into a CSV, you're going to avoid all of a sudden maybe losing oh UPC numbers that it all of a sudden on one save it changed the formula on it. So this is great. Open it up in uh, XLS or uh, anything but, uh, but CSV first. Now, this data sheet has all these tabs at the bottom. Tabs at the bottom won't import, right? You, uh, this is a bad data sheet. This is a, asking you to take all this information. You need it on one sheet. Uh, all this stuff, all the little notes and the bolds, no titles, no headings, this is not going to import into your website. This is for you to, I guess, manually import with very little of anything. Um, this is another sample of a bad data sheet. You can't import this. This is not ready at all. Uh, it looks cool, and I guess if you were going to... Um, to hand load this, you might start with this, but this is not ready to import. This is a data sheet that's ready to import. Now, if you're used to importing by hand, you might look at this and go, oh, well, yuck, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you do. Otherwise, you're going to spend hours, weeks, months hand porting, hand importing into your website. And that can happen. Maybe you want to just put one or two parts from a, a brand on your website. Great, import them by hand. But if you want to put an entire line, importing into your website is a really powerful tool. You could do all kinds of really cool stuff. But there are some rules that you have to follow. And we'll get into that when we're setting up. But I wanted to show you, first of all, uh, what a data sheet that's ready to import looks like. Uh, this is on a CSV, right? And it's got all your headings up on top. And you can import all kinds of stuff, right? Your images, your videos, your pricing, uh, your descriptions. You can bundle. This is coming off of an ASAP data sheet. And um, I want to explain something on Fitment, for example. When you see the little uh, double commas or triple commas, again, if you're hand importing this, you're probably going to go, how in the world am I supposed to figure this out? 
those are there because some of your parts don't have all the fields because they're not relevant. So when you see double commas, your website understands what to do with that. It's making a space and not putting it in for a field that doesn't exist, right? Um, when you're looking at uh, images, this has just one image, but you'll see images that have pipes in it. That's for multiple image loading, and, and we'll talk about that as well. But uh, on ASAP data, you get the SKU number, and then you get the manufacturer's original SKU. The reason we did that is after years of importing um, data for multiple brands on multiple sites, we discovered that sites like, or brands like Warren and maybe WeatherTech have du duplicate part numbers. Uh, you can't load duplicate part numbers onto your website. And it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Someone had the same idea. So we have amended to the back of a part number. I know some places amend to the front. However, on at least on Drupal, uh, when someone's searching a part number instead of a term or, or a category, it's going to read from the front to the back. And so if you uh, put that amendment to the front and someone knew they wanted a certain part number, your website's probably not going to show that. So if this is the first time you're loading a line onto your site, I recommend using this so you can avoid trying to load uh, a line only to be told, hey, out of 700 parts, three of them imported because the rest had duplicate uh, part numbers. And uh, so there you go. Um, you have your description. Uh, grouping. A lot of people ask about the grouping. So this is uh, a secondary step when you're going to make your displays for these parts that you loaded. And what we've done here is bundled um, the parts and given you a, a example of a title. What that means is, again, if you're going on to a, a website, your website, you want a good user experience. What you don't want to have is um, five parts that is the same part in essence, right? But maybe has a different finish or maybe um, a different color or something, uh, maybe a different length, right? So one eighth or one fourth. And you want that in one display so the customer knows, hey, that's the part I want. And then you want to be able to give them their choices in a drop down. So um, what we've done for you is looked at these parts before we put them on. And I, I think I've caught most of them, but if I thought they should go in the same display, I've, I've done that. Now it's fine, some of these are all by themselves, but we've also given you a title for those so that if it's in the same display, it doesn't have that part title. Um, so I've taken a lot of time to try and figure this out for you. You can use it or you don't have to, but it does make for a better user experience. Under your pricing, and the reason I'm showing the pricing, this is less pricing and it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not giving away any secrets on this. You cannot have on pricing when you import, and we'll talk about this in, in another one. Let me, uh, these dollar signs, you can't have them, right? Um, you got to get rid of them. You can't have any formulas. So sometimes you'll get something that comes over and uh, they have a drop down because they've given you a formula in that. When you're importing to your website, it's reading HTML. You don't think it is, but it is. And, and so HTML is code and these formulas just mess them all up. So you want to make sure that you remove the dollar sign, right? And you can do that by hitting find dollar sign and select it and replace all with nothing um, unless it's hard coded and then you'll have to copy and paste over without the uh, without the formula in there so uh, spending a minute with your data sheet to make sure you have everything you need is an important step so what are you going to need you're going to need the SKU number you're going to need the title the description you're going to need images um, if you're getting data from a different brand or off ASAP, you have a choice always to get the URLs, which I highly recommend, or a, uh, a 
zip file. Uh, all the zip files on ASAP have already been renamed, so those titles for those parts are renamed, but holy moly, the time you would spend trying to hand import, right, to hand load every image, I think you've got better things to do with your time. So I always recommend if you have a URL for images, great. Now, um, also you can import videos straight into the to the parts and we'll talk about that later uh, your shipping dimensions here most uh, most data sheets are going to have the dimensions and then they're going to have the unit now unless you take a look down and like these are all pounds most websites will default so you don't have to to insert this but if all of a sudden you find a manufacturer who doesn't have pound and has ounce instead then you'll want to remember that when you do the importer and, and we'll show you how that that works okay um, so back up here um, when you are importing to your website and you find a data sheet that has all kinds of columns and you're like what in the world is all that I don't need it that's fine if you're importing uh, nothing on your mapping that's not on here is going on your website so it could have a thousand categories or, or columns right if you didn't map it it won't import it so two things you can do is uh, delete the field altogether right clean it up make it easier for you to to figure out like you don't need ACES terminology um, the pull capacity for example or different fields you might find and as long as it's on your website as long as it's already been created as a field in your products then you can import this right brand you're always going to want to tell your website what the brand is you may not care about the country of origin or their AID number you will always see the last updated um, timestamp on ASAP data at least so you know hey I don't need to import all of this I just need to to do the most recent stuff so um, categories you're going to want to definitely have categories uh, otherwise you're going to import your data and it won't know where it's going to show up at so if you have like for example this that has multiple categories we'll talk about how to do that uh, when we map out your data and you certainly can there's some things I do you may or may not want to do but um, anyway so it's a it's a good time when you have a data sheet like this to take a minute and if you need to expand right if you need to expand these columns and and see them all great what you're looking for is missing information right um, do I have everything now sometimes you're going to load something and I like the weight the pull capacity um, not all and I'll expand this out not all of these will have pull capacity and that's fine because it doesn't have right it's a bumper it doesn't have it's not a winch it doesn't have the capacity so those are not the ones I'm saying make sure these are all filled in but do make sure you're not missing anything here that something doesn't look wonky there that you're not missing a part number or um, or a, a description or a title and I left a couple down here hang on at the bottom here um, so this would be something that I go hey I don't have images for this all right I also don't have this code over here uh, that wouldn't matter but just take a minute and look at this does everything look okay do you blatantly see something missing if everything looks okay awesome let's get ready to go now had this been in a XLS file you'd still have to then copy and save it uh, or save it as a CSV if you're getting ready to import so again this type of sheet you're gonna have <laughs> this is not ready to import right um, I think what has happened is, um, you know, as, as manufacturers got asked for data sheets or uh, went from, hey, here's our catalog to, uh, can you give me that in digital form? They thought, okay, let's make it a PDF. And then when people wanted that PDF in something they can import, uh, a lot of manufacturers never really got that connection of, 
uh, wait, let me make a PDF or an Excel sheet that looks like a PDF with all my notes. Y you can't. Any other fields in here um, need to be stripped out. So it's just time you have to spend. The manufacturers don't get it. They're not digital people. They're not techs. They are parts people. They know their product really well. We're helping them, but sometimes we haven't gotten to them yet or um, they don't want to uh, to move that way. Anyway, so here's step one. Uh, pull your data sheet up. Make sure you've got all the fields that you're going to need to make sure it loads in correctly. The next video we're going to talk about is um, the mapping and the settings on importing your data sheet. I hope this part of it helped a little bit and uh, we'll go on with the next one.